Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jake Kerr. Today I'm joined by Sean Trevina from Good Vibe Southwest Tours. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Yeah, bloody oath. <laughs> we, um, I met you for the first time two Thursday a week ago. It was, yes. Yeah, yeah, when you invited me along for a triple threat tour down at, we went to St. Aidan's, Capram, and then Froth. Yes. Which, just so you know, from the customer point of view, mixing wine, spirits, and beer all on the same day, especially as a non-drinker, I got home and I was like, oh, I'm yeah. intoxicated, aren't I? It can be dangerous, but it gives a good mix though as well. So yeah. it keeps everyone happy, ticks the, the kind of boxes oh, off. Oh, yeah, so if so. you are a wine drinker, you get your fix. If you're, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. right. Yeah, as a non-drinker, I just saw it as like, oh, we're going to get hurt. That's, <laughs> that, I mean, we also, yeah. we bought a bottle of champagne and drank that in between the, the winery and and cup rum oh, as well go. i didn't see any of that going on oh, yeah, no, of course yeah no we, we, we hid that well <laughs> you did you did so but it's um i, I love the concept i like the idea <laughs> of adults having fun to have fun oh that's it and it's yeah good fun for me as well watching everyone have a good laugh and a bit of a sing-along and yeah yeah just as the day goes on it gets you know a bit more rowdier and stuff but yeah, yeah. buddy oh. have yeah. you just got the one bus I've got the one bus, 24-seater, and then an eight-seater van as well. So I oh, did, yeah. did find there were smaller crews, and it's a bit more kind of, I suppose, luxury and just a bit more comfy. So Yeah, you got a lot less sound in a van compared to a bus. Yeah, you know, well, you lose, you, I suppose, with a group of six, you lose that atmosphere when you go to a bus and stuff, and it's kind of like, it just feels a bit not right. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the closer you get to an Escalade, the more upper market it feels, eh? Yeah. yeah. So it was a nice little... Uh, just to have the two and then, yeah. Yeah. So what's the, uh, how long have you been doing it? So two and a half years now. So around there. So oh yeah. I started kind of during so, COVID. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. That would have been a, um, that would have been a really interesting decision to go into a tourist based or even like a, an outside experience based kind of industry when COVID was looking the way, oh, I just said it. Was looking the way it was. <laughs> we're done. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I suppose it's, it was that risk, um, but I was looking for something new, exciting to do, something that I'd enjoy. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was always going to be a big risk, but when I saw like the amount of people flooding down, like you know, down the highway, even on a Friday afternoon, not even a long weekend, just yeah. every Friday afternoon there were just people flooding down south. I just thought. This is maybe a chance. Yeah, there's obviously yeah, a market there. There's people coming down, so yeah. yeah. I, thought. I can't believe on a Friday afternoon, I got caught two Fridays in a row, between like three and six sort of thing, mm. coming from Perth direction to, yeah. you know, going from Austin to Jalora, basically. Oh, yeah. And you're like, what? when did this happen? <laughs> you know, like I've been here 20 years this year or 21 years this year. Yeah. How does that work? Like, oh. when we first got here, there'd be like eight other cars on the Bustle Highway coming in from Jalora. Yeah, yeah. You know? It was insane, wasn't it? Just crazy times. So, but, uh, yeah, I suppose it was the amount of people going down. I had lots of family, friends coming down and always had people going, oh, you know, we should do a wine tour and everything. Yeah. So, kind of just stuck in my head a little bit. And I feel like there's uh, definitely a demographic of person <laughs> when you say, what should we do when we're in Bunbury and they've got four, five, six answers? Yeah. There's definitely that person. I feel like the majority of people, when you're like, what's there to do in Bunbury? They go, um, I know there's stuff to do. You can swim with the dolphins. And you're like, dude, how long have you been living here? You yeah, know, yeah. like there is more to do. I think yeah. the situation you're in is like, you actually, your part of your job is like uncovering these gems and going like, oh, I'm going to take you here. I know this slaps. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Ferguson Valley was just like this little hidden gem that really, I didn't know too many people that actually go out there and yeah. it's 20 minutes away it was just it's kind of crazy you know I'm still taking people from Bunbury actually out there that haven't been out there before which yeah. doesn't make sense to me cause it's wild yeah it's just such a nice lovely day trip it's um I, as a ex-cyclist I know Ferguson Valley like intimately because of the hills out oh, there yeah. it's like the one place you go to to wear out your legs basically oh yeah that'd be brutal some of those yeah hills, Pole they? Road especially yeah. has like a whole air around it of just being yeah. awesome to come down and yeah. just a bloody character building mission to get up you know? oh yeah but as far as the hospitality is concerned like I never really considered it as a place you might go to spend the day but after going to St. Aidan's it was like oh I can see myself like fully wasting half a day here mm. just with a good crew because you're like out in the middle of nowhere yeah but you're also a stone's throw away from home so you're like it's not yeah it's, like if I get written off I can still get home you know yeah. oh that's it yeah you're not and yeah it's just so 
scenic out there and yeah there are there's actually some plenty of venues out there that yeah you wouldn't i suppose you know st aidens and bush shack are probably the big ones that everyone knows about but yeah. there's plenty more out there what um so do you obviously the triple threat tour that's like a, a package do you have other packages available i do yeah so on the website there's things from just the brewery tour so we call it um like you know all different kind of kind, kind of names there's a wine tour where you, yeah, you're just doing wine tasting and all that and then you've got the we've got a tour called to mix a lot so that's oh, the yeah. one where but it's it's probably a bit more popular down south of the year where you do the breweries you do the wineries and yeah. then you throw in a distillery as well to mix things up um yeah but yeah we've got different packages on there and all that just to I suppose keep everyone happy you know sometimes like the bucks do's and stuff they just like to stick to the breweries yeah 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 sometimes the hens do's just really prefer the wineries yeah. some people just prefer that whole mix up so. is there any sort of like NDA you have to sign before a real rowdy crew gets on uh, like I imagine you would have like the best fly on the wall perspective of the craziest shit happening I do like and I, I suppose 90-95% of the crews are just unbelievable amazing yes they get rowdy and have a bit of a laugh and stuff you, you might have a few little spillages here and there but yeah, most of the time it's just people just there for a good time and they all look after each other yeah. and everything so but um every now and then you've got to expect something not to go to plan and yeah. you've just got to cop that don't you yeah 100% and also <laughs> I feel like like oh, I've done a few events and stuff with Black Ink I feel like that's part of the fibre of the experience because yeah. every now and then it's like stuff goes sideways oh yeah and you're like oh that's that's what your day story is going to be moving forward you know? yeah. I can't help you with that but from the from the um operator's point of view i guess you kind of like don't get too crazy you know yeah well i mean i suppose it is one of the big questions when i first get a crew on and stuff that oh you must have some good stories of drunk people and all that and yeah you do but um you've just got to have a bit of patience yeah <laughs> just, yeah. yeah i must admit i couldn't deal with it and... could not do your job <laughs> dealing with drunk people i don't know whether i'm uh, scarred from yeah well, i think a lot of people can which yeah doesn't make sense to me. and i suppose when i started the business as well because i do like a beer but it was one of the things I had to really think of, you know, being out all day and not being able to touch a drop. And it was just something I was just like, well, I really enjoy meeting people, hanging out. Yeah. You know, I get to hang out at breweries and wineries all day. And now it's just it's just a job. It's, I suppose. Yeah. Bro, if you um, ask me to cultivate weed all day and not smoke, I'd, <laughs> I'd laugh at you, you know. <laughs> so, no, it can't be done. It can't be done. Prove yeah. to me it can be done. Fair enough, know? yeah. So no, it's it's a bloody. It's just something you deal with. I'd, I'd much prefer to be doing that than what I had been doing. Like so, you know, it's where where did what what background did you come from? Well, saying that I did have a good job back in the day. I used to be a, a personal trainer working oh, in gyms see. for probably fifteen years there. Yeah. So and I did have my own business, Vortex Personal Training, for six of those years. See. So again, it was working with people, helping people. So yeah, similar but not. But um, I just enjoyed that whole you know kind of yeah it was just such a good lifestyle and you get to work out so and then i went out to the mines and a bit of truck driving yeah like, like you had mentioned that you've done and it just didn't do it for me no nah. and i've always been one of those people that i can even remember back in high school always thinking all right i don't care how much money i earn i just want to enjoy what i'm doing yeah be happy yeah yeah so it was searching for that when i was out in the mines and just it was doing my head in mentally I wasn't good and I was like right oh, I've got to find something I enjoy again and it took a little while but I got there so it's weird that allure of um the paycheck that up north offers oh, yeah it's crazy this is I don't know I feel like I talk about this every guested podcast but <laughs> I've figured out how to live with nothing yeah I don't want a, abundant money if it comes to giving up my time anymore no no it's just not it's not worth it you know it like isn't. I'd rather be poor at home hanging out with my dog no you know making stuff whatever yeah. drawing pictures in the sand than in a truck making 30 40 50 bucks an hour yeah you know yeah i and feel it, like it's it, not even the it's the it's the it's like the spiritual bandwidth that you yeah, take yeah. from me when i'm working for you for 12 hours at a time i'm not allowed to use my phone i'm not allowed to look down you know no. my eyes are being tracked by some bullshit that you've got oh no that's insane what are we talking well, about i've seen some of that it's crazy oh, you know and if yeah. they think that you're falling asleep they'll vibrate the seat and then <laughs> call you straight away and it's like whoa whoa yeah like that is drawing away my soul from me you know yeah it does feel a bit like that and mm. I, I remember driving some of the buses as well for the big companies and yeah they like it makes a big loud beat if you kind of just go off a little bit yeah 
it, but it happens like constantly. It's just like just draining. Just, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That's, and then the sound is just really loud. Yeah. To hear that constantly, you know, and you know you feel fine within yourself, but I suppose. I think this the nature the of is. humans is to every now and then deviate and correct. That's the idea. You, you can't perfection. Draw a straight line. Yeah, no, you can't. You no. can't. And also, like the a, you you shift work. Yeah. So you're already fatigued. You already have no what they call it, circadian rhythm. That yeah. has been completely altered every four days or every week, whatever it is. So you're already on the back foot. Yeah. And then you go and jolt me and give me a nice surge of cortisol <laughs> and my fucking ears start burning. And now I'm more likely, because I'm on edge, to like, okay, avoid it, avoid it, avoid it. And what happens when you look at something is you drive towards it. Yeah, yeah. Ah, it's a bloody, the snake eats it its is, tail. yeah. No, you're, you're right. Like, you are. You, you feel like you're on edge. So I, some people can do it, but yeah. yeah. It's uh, crazy, so yeah. No, I haven't got any of that technology in the the good vibes bus. <laughs> yeah, so, nah, dude. I just, uh, I just I just bought that van, which is a year older than the Ute that I had, which was a 2011. And I was saying to someone the other day, like, I'm at the point where you had like, uh, you know, electric windows. Yeah. But everything else is still basically analog. Yeah. You know, you yeah. switch the thing for the aircon, like a one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that's perfect. There's nothing wrong with that. You want the technology to stop there because it seems like everything after that, you get to a point where you know the lane correction and yeah. there's a car in in your blind spot that your mirror can see but you can't, so the light comes on. Yeah. It's like man, push the button and have it wipe my ass as well. You know, <laughs> like, what are we doing here? Oh, that's it. Yeah. Well, I had a Ford Everest there for a little while as well, and. And they were the ones like, you know, you go a little bit sideways and it, the steering wheel actually Chucks pulls it. across as yeah. well. And I was like, oh, that took ages to get used to. Well, I suppose yeah. there is some benefit to it, but yeah, it takes a while to get used to that. Well, this is the thing. You're the guy who grew up, you know, <clears throat> driving stick, I'm guessing, in the paddock. And then, <laughs> and then it went to, you know, like you probably got a manual somewhere in like t- mid-20s, 30s. And then you get to a point where you're like, you go back to, the, to like driving that bus and you're like, oh, this is nice. I can feel, I can smell it, you know? Yeah. It's good. Imagine you're a seventeen year old, you've got your P plates, you're in a Tesla. Yeah. Right? That that like feeling of like what do you call it? It's not it's like that real feeling of like what driving a vehicle is and like respond especially like if you grow grew up with no power steering and then got it. Yeah, yeah. You're like you understand like, oh, there's a bit more connection between me and the bitchman here. You get in a Tesla and it's like, I might as well be in a video game. Yeah, yeah. You know, but if that's the foundation of their knowledge and like experience of driving that's insane. Yeah. You know, like they're going to go from, okay, so we're going to go from here to it getting better. So I eventually won't even have to tell it where I'm going. It'll know based off the AI chip in my brain. So I'll just kind of like <laughs> float out to my car, the door will open, I'll get in and it will just take me there. Yeah. What you point? Know? Yeah. You, are you thinking for yourself? Or yeah. Whatever? That's a part of the, like, why are they teaching anyone to drive a 16 speed road ranger gearbox anymore? Oh, that will be obsolete in like 35 minutes. Yeah. You oh, know? that's it. Man. That's the way it's going for sure. Mm. But... So, that's all right. I feel going back a conversation, that situation where you're like you you're doing a thing that you don't like doing, and you're like, I've got to go do this. I've got to go find the thing that I like doing. Yeah. I think there's like a uh, like if you graph it, there's a point where those two intersect where you're like, I don't care how much money I have, mm. and I don't care what it takes, but I just need to not do this. Yeah. I think that is something that people play with every day. Yeah, and. As I said, like I think it goes back to me. I remember back in high school thinking along those ways, and and especially once I started my kind of personal training, working in gyms, it became more like obvious to me because I'd see people come in from their daily jobs, you know, and they just oh, you could see like they just really hated their lives. They just didn't hurt. enjoy it, and like, obviously the gym was a bit of a highlight for them, and it gave them that bit of a lift. But you could see them coming in after a day of work and. Yeah, they just looked horrible. <laughs> in a, it's interesting, in, in hey? some sort of way. Like I know it's bad to probably say, but they they look drained. They just yeah, yeah. And, and then, then you also, see it out in the mines as well, being out there. It's what dude, it's experience out there. It breaks my heart knowing it like does. one of my good friends. Good friends is like I've seen him. We're, we're like our friendship started before he did fly and fly out. Yeah, and he's been doing it now for say a year, or whatever. Like when he's back, it's on. Like yeah. We have a fat time, but yeah. it's like there's two weeks of sitting around twiddling me thumbs. I've got, I've got friends, I got hang out with like that dude. Like I love that dude. I love spending yeah. time with that dude. And it's like now he just like it's not like he's gone two thirds of your life. It's like he's just gone forever. Yeah, yeah. You know. And then when I do see him, you got to fit in so much in a two hour yeah, catch up. Jam-packed. You know. And it's like, man, how much money are you making? Yeah. You know. It, yeah. Is it really worth it? But yeah. I but suppose. this is just I, I feel like I whinge about this all the time. It's something that we've normalized now to the point that you know you 
you encourage it. You know, like I got mm. friends where their partners like, oh, I'm gonna stop doing my small business and go fly and fly out because I yeah. can make quadruple the amount of money. It's like, but you've got everything. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Like, what more do you need? You need a fucking bigger house. Yeah. Is a jet ski and another seat on it. Like, yeah. What do you need? You yeah. Know? Well, but, I think yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, you've got to go in with kind of a bit of a game plan to go for four or five years, get your money, get set, set yourself up get out but i think a lot of people just end up getting stuck in there and you can see it in, in them out there they look at probably a lot older than what they are yeah <laughs> i think it just ages i don't think it's a healthy lifestyle out there i'd love to know how many of them like this is the thing like now i've lived with nothing if yeah. you're making 200 grand a year you need to be bankrolled all the time yeah i need you to have a lot of money yeah i need you to have a savings account with 20 grand in it that you don't touch on yeah. top of the other savings that you keep because it's so much money that you're making. Oh, it's crazy, yeah. But these guys live no different to me. Yeah. Hand them out. Hand them yeah. out. That's it. Yeah. You know, like these guys that like my friends that are working fly and flat, I got like one or two financially responsible friends and they own <laughs> fucking everything. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Four cars, two houses, you've got ex missus, she takes a quarter of it as well. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's like <laughs> nuts that that exists as well. But like most of my friends that are doing fly and flat, it's like you're not in a financially better position. You're just uh, buying nicer shit all the time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, I suppose you've got to be smart about it, don't you? Yeah, 100%. 100%. And I think that four or five year plan, we're like, I'm going to get in, you know, I'll get the deposit on the house and we'll also pay it half off and rah, rah. Yeah. It's like, that's good, but like also show me in your history where you've made a plan and stuck to it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, same with, I suppose, only a small business and stuff. Yeah, you've, you've kind of got to be even that little bit more smarter and... Yeah, have a, that those plans set out and mm. where you want to be and where you want to go. So, how yeah. have you found the difference between as far <laughs> as like owning a business is uh, as a personal trainer compared to as like a entertainment or tourist guide <laughs> based business? Uh, I think I think I've I learnt a lot from having that business initially. I was still quite young um, and probably inexperienced. I didn't have the I suppose the business background. I just had. What I knew, I had, you know, a lot of knowledge in, so I backed myself, like, you know, with all that, so, yeah. but I didn't have that business background, which I probably was a little bit raw and inexperienced with, so it probably didn't, I didn't do as good as I probably could have, yeah. um, but I knew what I was doing, I was, I knew I was doing a good job and what I was offering, and, yeah. and the feedback was always good, so going in this time, I did have a bit more of a business plan and yeah yeah, yeah. So, and a, again i just i backed myself in again it was a massive risk but i backed myself in i knew i could do it i knew the the opportunity was there but yeah you, i just knew i had to set up that business yeah do you think um, you perform well like you mentioned that you kind of i know you're backing yourself in a way as far as like betting on yourself yeah but also do you feel that you maybe put yourself in a situation where you had immediately like you had immediate pressure to perform uh, I was like, all right, you spent the money, you're in, now do it. Do you do you find there was that kind of situation, or you kind of have a smooth entry into it? I think I think it was a fairly smooth entry. It was it got busy pretty much from the get go. It actually was a lot busier than I actually thought it would be. Yeah. Um, and I didn't put too much pressure on myself. I don't think so. Yeah. There are times where it goes quiet and you do kind of start to doubt, but yeah, all of a sudden like. You know, next month it just goes nuts again, and yeah. it's like, okay, now it's good again. So oh, you just got to ride those things, and it's all learning. I love the uh, I love the idea of like a scale that's on top of my head that changes color, <laughs> and like sometimes the scale is like all dirty shades of red, and then yeah. I get a phone call and it's like, hey Jake, can I order four hundred hats? And it immediately goes like gold. Oh, You're like, I know. Thank you, man. I was uh, <laughs> I was wondering how I was going to fuel my car up this afternoon. This is great. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> you know. Oh, it can change like that. It can like, so quick. Oh, you got. I went to print some stickers yesterday, and it gave me a new error that I've yeah. never seen before. And I'm like googling. I'm like, oh, oh I'm going to have to buy a new. This is uh, this is bad. You yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Turn it off and on and it went away. I'm like, fucking yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just something so small. Like, oh, and man. yeah, you do doubt yourself at times as well. Like there's oh. times where, am I doing something wrong? Like why aren't people ringing up or messaging, asking for tours and stuff? I'm like, why has it gone quiet? And yeah. I don't know. It's just... I, I, I figured out there's probably no real answer to it. It's just sometimes they're quiet, sometimes they're busy. So. Yeah, I think... <laughs> um, I think that... I mean, that whole topic is such a mind it's such a minefield as a business owner because mm. like I'm in this weird position where I'm like valuing myself of how well my content does how many t-shirts I can sell how many businesses come to me and get me to make their uniforms and stuff and then yeah you go like 
why do I have nothing on at the moment? Like, why is there nothing generating money? Yeah, and you're yeah. like, is this because I'm not good at my job? And yeah. It's like, no, dude, it's because no one called you today. <laughs> it's because no one had the idea like, oh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll go to, you know what I mean? Yeah. So then, you know, I kind of, that question, I feel like I always answer it with like, well, if you're quiet, market, focus on marketing. If you're busy, focus on delivering. Yeah. And, and collecting the shit to market right. with. That's that's true, yeah. There's yeah. other things to do and keep you occupied. So, you know, you've just got to make the most of those quieter times to focus on something else. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird because it feels like sometimes you're like, I just need a day where I can do like these 40 two minute jobs yeah and then like it feels like every other day is filled with things that take a day to do or two days to do and then you get those days that are empty you're like where are all these two minute jobs that I thought I had yeah, you know yeah, they just yeah. like dissipated into <laughs> bloody thin air yeah so, so what are you doing outside of business what's what's your uh, what are your hobbies you into surfing hobbies. skating hanging well I used to love surfing uh, it's kind of gone on the, the back burner I'd, and but just recently in the last few weeks I've just been like I really want to get back into it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm I from Perth, so a lot of my mate, surfing mates are up there, so I've kind of moved down to Bunbury, and obviously the surf isn't pumping you know, all yeah, the time yeah, yeah. down here, so it is kind of gone on the background a little bit, and um, it's partly my fault, but yeah, it, it, it'll be good to kind of, I suppose, have a mate to just push you or get you back into it, because yeah, I think oh. once you know you get that first surf back in, you kind of right, oh yeah catch a bug again but yeah goes. i just kind of feel you feel like when you haven't done it for a while you kind of like, oh, i'm gonna go out there and just be an absolute kook yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> so it kind of puts you off doing it but you just got to do it so yeah surfing footy basketball all sorts of sports gym do you know troy bodigal no interesting dude i'm like yeah. uh, i was gonna run for council which made me like organically meet all the big players in town when I say big players it's just like the old brass you know yeah, yeah. all the people that have been around and done everything and one of the names I got over and over was like meet Troy okay. so here's a guy behind I forget his business name but here's a guy behind the inflatable pillows they were putting in to uh, make yes, the yes. barrels yeah. which obviously tore um, one of them mm-hmm. tore and now he's looking at redoing the project with stones Right. so it's like an organic yeah and it, it, it was you know and basically it's it, the idea is that it'll be able to like organically stand everything because that's what stones do hmm. and then once it works once do it twice three times and then obviously take that to other places in Australia and then hopefully around the world oh okay and yeah. he's got like I mean he's, he's got everything backing him he's just I, I'm not quite sure what this what stage he's at with implementing this new plan hmm. I do know that he suffered a bit of a like um the optics of the thing tearing wasn't great for him. No, no. But so, at the same time, it's it a like, bit of a blow. So I, I do remember hearing about that. That was when I was kind of first coming down. So it did get me excited when yeah. I heard that they were going to implement and have oh, a crack at these. And this then, is huge. So if, if if they get it and it works, like that's huge. Oh, hundred percent. So there's potential there for it. Yeah, yeah, you can see. But yeah, interesting guy to um to link up with just as like a. An interesting person in Bunbury. He's also one of the... I want to say he's one of the, like... What do you call it? People who are involved with the Bunbury board riders. Yeah. So he invited me to, like, a movie night that they were having a... Oh, yeah. Uh, thing... Uh, froth. Froth, yeah. yeah. a couple of Fridays ago. And I went there and the place was packed. Yeah. And yeah. everyone was, a, like, a Bunbury board rider. So... Yeah. Interesting little community that I haven't really dabbled in at all. Yep. Yeah. Now they're around, so... Yeah, you know, bloody yeah. just got to reach out and get yeah. out there and talk to people and... So something come. tell me a bit about this, uh, about your personal training days. I find gym life <laughs> so interesting. There's like yeah. a, a weird mix of like insecurity, ego and like people on crazy plans and stuff in oh, gyms. Yeah, it's, it is. It's, it's a kind of crazy kind of world. And I suppose I fell, fell away a little bit with it because it, it felt to me it had gone away from just being about people and like helping people. It became a bit more obviously all the online stuff you had to really promote yourself mm. lots of selfies it just wasn't me so that kind of made me fall away with it with it a little bit but um i mean yeah you've got so many different kind of types of circles and stuff but mm. I, th- I think yeah 100 percent that you deal with insecurities um you you feel good when you do it but then you don't, you don't do it then all of a sudden you feel crap yeah so it's Oh, dude, walking back into the gym after a week off. Yeah. You're like, do these people even know my name anymore? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you're just walking over, like, how much do I, how much do I squat again? I don't think I do squat, come yeah. to think of it, you know? <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, it's, it can be a little bit down putting as well. You're just like, oh, now I'm going to be back, you know, 
weaker and everything so mm. I, I suppose it is a, a bit of a mental battle but um I yeah. just find the like I was talking to my partner the other day about I'm not really doing anything resistance it's all just cardio stuff oh, okay yeah, yeah I want to make sure I get some like bone density in my 30s so I don't reach my 40s <laughs> and be like what happened like everyone does yeah so I was like we're talking about like oh you know f45 fit stop maybe go to a gym you know and I was like just the thought of like the smell of a gym when you walk in the door is just so like I feel like as soon as you walk in no one's looking at you everyone's looking at you you know yeah because you know as soon as you're 10 minutes in you're looking at everyone else well it's true yeah and I don't mean like (laughs) I'm staring at that ass over there and that's what I'm looking at I mean peripherally I know what the fuck's going on I know where everyone is and what everyone's doing I know don't look too far over there because a chick wearing real tight shorts and a be like a magnet if I get too close yeah, so just yeah. avoid that you know <laughs> yeah, it's and this dangerous dude, now <laughs> this dude over here is obviously on fucking a serious cycle that <laughs> means that if I look at him he may think I'm trying to battle him or something yeah. so it's like just that whole concept I'm like oh, I, I can't do it I can't do it yeah. you know I just yeah. gotta lift bricks in the backyard you know <laughs> well yeah I suppose for a lot of people it's quite intimidating going into that you know I go to world gym and I've definitely heard a few people kind of comment saying it feels intimidating and all that but you know, I don't think it is. Like, when you actually look around, I've seen old women, old men, like, all sorts. Just, yeah. you know, skinny people, bigger people, like, and they're all just there just to better themselves that little bit or feel yeah. better. And I honestly don't think it's, you know, yeah, you're going to have those bigger guys and strong girls and all that, but I don't, if you just get in there and just put your head down. Do the thing. Do, do what you came to do. Yeah, you know, don't worry about everyone else. So yeah, yeah, I'm just a bitch. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose there are so many other different gyms and stuff. The smaller, quieter ones. I, yeah, yeah. I think it's more as well. Like, yeah. See, okay, this is actually a this is actually a, a case study, right? Because like you get it, you're a tall dude. I've also got like long hair. I'm covered in tattoos. So if yeah. I wear short sleeves or a singlet, I'm showing off. If I wear long sleeves, hot as fuck, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I'm like at a, at a crossroads there. <laughs> it's like you walk in, you do the thing, you know, like, yeah, I, I, I'm this person, whatever. Yeah. And then you go start doing your thing. And then it's like, now I feel like I've got to live up to this expectation that I've built in their minds of me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So oh, if yeah. I start warming up with like, you know, a 25 kilo squat, it's like, were you pussy? <laughs> I thought you big guy covered in tattoos, you know? I suppose you get that everywhere. That, like, well, people get that everywhere. You know, people are going to judge. Yeah. Know. Oh, yeah. That's a me problem. Yeah. That's a me problem. Well, it is, yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people deal with that. But, yeah, no matter where you go, you're going to get people judging you, aren't you? Yeah. So. It's I think, true. It's I think true. for me as well, because obviously back 10, 15 years ago when I was working out a lot, you know, and I was fairly fit and healthy and strong and all that, but now... I'm nowhere near what I was so you know it always plays in my head of what I used to be like yeah. and now what I am now and I look at myself and yeah it is a bit of a mental battle you kind of just oh jeez back in my younger day I was what, fucking what fit of, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it is a hard thing and sometimes as you get older you kind of really accept that yeah you're maybe not going to be quite what you were and it, yeah. it's bloody hard yeah. yeah well I think the uh, as someone who's like uh all right, as someone who perceives himself as emotionally intelligent, I don't want to say that I am, I'm just saying that I perceive myself as emotionally intelligent. Yeah. I feel like, and also holding like a certain amount of integrity accountable to myself, it's like a part of me struggles to accept that I'm getting older. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I run down the, to the bottom of the hill and I run back up again, I'm like, I've been smoking weed for 10 years, I'm dying. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whereas I went, I used to be a pro skater, you know what I mean? We're oh, like yeah. sprinting up that hill multiple times and yeah. I'd be like, ha ha, as I go past you, Easy. it's like, that's all gone now. Yeah, yeah. So there's a part of me that like doesn't want to accept that I'm growing older and that I have to accept that things, if you don't exercise them, what, what is it? Entropy. Yeah. They go away. Yeah. So I think people accept that going like oh yeah but I'm you know I'm not in my 20s anymore so I let it like I feel like that's the easy thing for most people and I'm and I say without integrity because they go like yeah I'm getting older so I don't have to be physically fit yeah and I'm like well if I don't touch my toes every day one day I'm not going to be able to touch my toes yeah yeah so then you have this thing of like you know the battle of like I don't I ride my bike because I enjoy it I ride my bike to make sure that I can still get to the top of the Churchill yeah yeah you know I need to know that so I have that confirmation as long as you still enjoy it though as well like, yeah, yeah 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 that's true you I, said you had a bit of a background with it and stuff so, you know. I wish I got into the bloody thing of lifting weights when I was a kid so that was my thing that I enjoyed doing because <laughs> the byproduct just is like oh yeah you look awesome 
you yeah. know? Yeah. No, it's not for everyone, though. Like, mm. Yeah, I mean, I find it hard to jump on a treadmill and, and do cardio, where some yeah. people just go on there and just go for an hour. Just yeah. Do you put the music on and all that? Where it, I'd Have much you, prefer just go run around a footy field or a basketball. Yeah, I was going to say, I was actually listening to a listening or reading something about running just recently yeah. and I, they were saying like the truth about you know how people run to get the runner's high they'll just like one day start running and they're like yeah. I'm a runner now you know yeah. and they're talking about like this <laughs> runner's high thing is is it a is it like a you're mm-hmm. like you're doing it because you get this feeling afterwards or are you doing it because you're afraid of the fact that now you've started if you stop you won't be able to get started again yeah yeah I well I can say kind of both sounds like I think yeah, uh, you when when I'm usually playing footy and all that, and you're up and about, you're fit and everything, and all of a sudden the footy season starts, and you have like maybe a couple of weeks off just to recover, rest the body. Yeah. And then it's kind of again you've got to get yourself. Oh, I've got to start running again, otherwise yeah. I'm going to lose all that. And I'll, and the worst thing is going for that first run, and knowing how breathless you are. Yeah. And it's just like you know, oh, what. That's There's something about uh, the slow process of the slow process of progress in humans in general mm-hmm. that keeps you so honest. And then, have you heard of this Ozempic? No. It's like the new celebrity thing that they're doing, and it basically like um, it like controls your hunger, so you're just not hungry. Oh right, okay. So another trend. That's, yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, you know, it's just like another thing where it's like, <laughs> oh, here's a short, here's a, here's a pill, here's a shortcut, you know, yeah. and people are doing it, and it's like that there. Like we're in the early enough days of that where it's like, oh, all you guys are gonna die from something, you know? That's yeah. cool. You just don't don't because you don't know because we haven't done it yet. Yeah, yeah. Know? But the reality is like this human process is anything worthwhile takes ages. Yeah. Whether it's fitness, whether it's business, whether it's and even like working on your character. You know what I mean? Like I want to be someone that doesn't get angry. I want to be someone who handles all situations really well. That takes your whole life to get good at. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. that takes going through millions of situations and fucking them up to realise that's, what you shouldn't do. Yeah, that's not easy. That's, mm. Yeah, that takes a lot of self-control and all that. But I suppose going back to the running and the gym and stuff, what I always used to tell people was the hardest bit is just getting there. Yeah. You know, walking into the gym was always the hardest bit. Once you're there, that's easy. Yeah, that's so it's, true. And the same with running. Like, the hardest bit is just getting outside and get going because yeah. once you get going you feel good and you're like we're not always feel good but you're going to feel better than what you did yeah so yeah 100% just get there and I always kind of because I've seen obviously you do a, a little bit of a group skating thing and all that and you know I think that's really good just getting together and you know going doing something enjoyable like and it's yeah, still yeah. some form of fitness yeah it's, and you're all just there kind of getting each other outside dude it's the being there yeah it's the being there it's nuts yeah. and like the cool part about it for me just as a person who like commits to being like okay I'll I'll remind you guys and I'll go I'll make sure I'm the one who's there every time <laughs> yeah. and like part of that like 30% of me is like oh I've got this damn responsibility I've got to be there for these yeah. people rah, rah. and the other 70% of me is like I've got somewhere to be mm. 5.30 Monday night guess where I'm going to be at the skate you yeah. want to know how long I'm going to be there for I'll tell you because I do it every week yeah 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 you know nah. and it's like there's something about that that for me, it's like I'm I'm looking for other people to have shit they want to do once a week. I'll come do it with you. Mm. You know, like I yeah. want to. We have a thing here called Boys Club as well. Hilarious having a Boys Club in 2023 because it's so <laughs> exclusionary. But no girls allowed. I'm sorry, it's it's not a sexist it? thing. It's just we don't want them there. You know. Yeah, but it's it's pretty rare to have that nowadays. Right. So I don't think we have enough men's kind of things. Yeah. Like, oh no. Yeah. Heaven forbid being a man in the current current age. It's crazy. But it's a coffee van. Yeah. And it's just all guys who are free on a Thursday morning. The, yeah, that's yeah. the only thing that determines who's here. You yeah. stand around and you talk shit. And like, yeah. even for my dad, who's retired, hanging out at home, he comes and gets a coffee, talks about cars that he wants to buy and sell, and then sometimes even does it. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, it's cool, like networking, <clears throat> but it's really cool just to see these guys like, yeah, I'll come drink coffee with you on a Thursday. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden you got six, 10, 12 blokes standing around. You're like, yeah. This is cool. Yeah, yeah. And this I think cool. it is important, especially for the older guys as well. As you get older, you kind of disconnect a little bit, but that's yeah. you know, more important than ever to, you know, and it doesn't always have to be a beer, does it? So, you know, no, it's no. good that, yeah, just get a little community of blokes together, have a coffee and do the thing. And just talk shit. Yeah. Yeah, I think the exercise of being social is important. Yeah. You know, like, I feel like people think, like, oh, I'm a social person. 
So I just go into a situation and it's like, I handle it really well. It's like, yeah. no, no, no. I put myself in social situations so much that I know the, the patterns and the routines and what people are going to say and what I say back to them that the entry into being social is so well refined that I can be a social person. Yeah. But if you spend six weeks at home doing the lawns and watching TV and all that and then you go out and you go to the survey for the first time like, how are you going? You're like, uh, you don't know. You're out of practice. <laughs> oh, yeah. 100%. You get that bit of anxiety. You're like... Yeah, yeah. It does. It feel, it's like the first time you told feeling. someone to have a good day and you're like, am I telling them to do something I shouldn't? You know? <laughs> it's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. Interesting. So yeah. I think that whole appreciating that thing that we do as an exercise rather than as like a privilege is really important. Yeah. You know? So it's like I try and say this to people all the time. They're like, oh, it's as if, you know, I have some sort of like more opportunities happen in my life. And it's like, well, two things. I be where the opportunity is. And yeah. I'm very aware of what an opportunity looks, sounds, and feels like. Yeah, yeah. So when it's right there, I'm like, hey, let's do this. Let's mix these two ideas. Let's go do this together, you know? Yeah, no, it seems like you've done really well with that sort of type of thing and, you know, just making the most of it just an opportunity or seeing an opportunity and jumping out it with both hands. Man, yeah. I actually wanted to uh, run this, uh, it's not, well, it's <clears throat> past idea. It's like, this is a thing that we do now. So I've, uh, have I told you at all about my team building days? I have a feeling maybe you might have mentioned something but I don't oh, know too much about it I think we did talk about it on the Triple yeah. Vet Tour so basically what I said to my audience was like I want to run this day where I'm not going to tell you what we're going to do and it's mm. going to tell you how much it's going to cost that's it so mm. it's on this day it costs $500 I got 10 seats who wants them and oh, I had no. 10 boys like, here's fucking $500 take my money take my yeah, money yeah. so I picked them up 7.30 in the morning um, I told them to be at Australian Maccas, uh, trained out Maccas. Oh, so they're there at 7.30. Yeah. At 8 o'clock, I had a limo pull up and everyone got in the limo. We drove to Perth. Everyone got a matching shirt. Their nickname that I'd assigned them on the day on the shirt and this design <laughs> on the front, a little skull. So we end up going, and they don't know anything is happening, right? Yeah, so we yeah, pull up that's... to bloody, like a rifle range and we do skeet shooting, like competition skeet shooting against each other oh, two rounds. Yeah, yeah. We then have a full catered lunch there at the... Um, shotgun range yeah. while all that was happening the driver goes off comes back and when he comes back all of the eskies are full of everyone's piss and we're like ready to start the rest of the day so the boys are full of food they've had a morning had the coffee we've stopped off halfway to Perth we've had a feed we've done the shotgun shooting we've had another feed at lunchtime it's one o'clock yeah. we go from there to Fremantle we split into two groups and on the way to Fremantle I said right here boys we're getting a tattoo Everyone's getting the same tattoo. Oh. The tattoo is this skull that we've got on our shirt here. Right. And you have to decide. We're all getting in the same spot. You've got to decide in the next 10 minutes where we're getting it. So everyone's agreed like we'll get it on our thumb. I was like, fucking oath, let's go. <laughs> so we get there. We split into our two groups. First group goes and gets tattooed. The other group goes to um, the Palace Arcade. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you're doing the um, mini golf, the bowling, oh, yeah, and the yeah. arcade just, games. Yeah, yeah. And they've got like a, one of them, they've got a card that just has all the money in the world on it. So you can go do whatever you want infinitely, right? Yeah, yeah. And then once these tattoos are done, we swap place. The other boys get their tattoos, including the driver, including the photographer, which is insane. So 12 wow. tattoos, right? They all got, got around it. Yeah. yeah. No one said no. No one said no. There was a clean That's skin impressive. there. And he got this tattoo on his <laughs> thumb. So it's fucking, and also Dakota, who was on the trip, he was he was on my fucking team building day, so he has this same tattoo. So oh, that's that, that's impressive. We jump back in the limo <laughs> and we come home. It's like eight thirty on a Friday night. Everyone's like, even if there was shit going on tonight, we're oh, <laughs> we're done. Spent. Catch you later. Yeah, yeah. So action packed day. Eh? The timing of this is impeccable because this happened about twelve months ago now. About uh, would have been about eleven months ago actually. Mm. And the boys were on me, you know, day two, day two. And they told me on the day, they're like, if you said it was, now, knowing what we know now, we would have spent a thousand bucks on today. And wow, if we got the same yeah. experience, we would have been stoked for a thousand bucks. Yeah. And to be honest, I probably chipped in about two grand on my own. But you got a limo, yeah, it's hard to... 12 tattoos, a full pack lunch, skeet shooting, the fucking arcade. That's a lot of planning. A lot, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. And I can appreciate that because obviously I'd plan tours. Yeah, I understand, right? So and also, they have no idea. Yeah. No idea. So like the fucking, it's for me, it's super exhilarating because I'm oh, like, oh, you, you wait, you wait. I'm going to blow your mind. Yeah. So. But good all, good on all of them for 
being like a yes person. Just, right, you know, right. Because you know, a lot of people would be like, oh, you know, five hundred something bucks. on, you know, and you'll make an excuse. I mean, I've, I've had a out. lot of good ideas that haven't pulled through, you know? So it's like, <laughs> I fully appreciate if you're like, yeah, I, I trust you 60%, you know? Because I'm, yeah. I'm an ambitious person, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So right now, uh, I've been threatening the boys. I'm like, you know, day two's coming, day two's coming. Yeah. Created That's the fine. group chat yesterday and didn't write anything in there instantly all the boys are like come this is it he's gonna drop it this is it what's the date i'll take it off work <laughs> i put in there right anyone who's available on friday and saturday the 24th and 25th of november speak now the day's gonna cost a thousand dollars i want you from seven o'clock in the morning until lunchtime the next day so you've got next level now you've got two days two days double the money double the money so and the experiences are fucking nuts <laughs> they're so crazy <laughs> I'll tell you off camera so that oh. <laughs> I, I don't ruin it for the boys. No, no, we, yeah. But it's um, I, what what I will say though is like I think what a really cool part about this, the mission for this whole thing was was to create an environment that was a cross between a Bucks Day and Year Seven camp. <laughs> okay. Because both of those situations, you leave and you're like, I had so much fun. Yeah. But it was for a reason. Oh, it's because yeah. this dickhead's getting married, or it's because we had to go to Nanga Bush camp. Mm. You know. So for me, I was like, oh, you, you didn't go to school in Bunbury. No. Nanga Bush camps where everyone went to Yeah, camp. I've heard it. I think I had a wedding there, actually. Yeah, and they got like... They, yeah, yeah, they got, that was amazing. It was yeah, it was amazing beautiful. wedding. Yeah. Just kept everyone there. And and it's like so well, like um, like the structure, how everything is put together. is like yeah. everything's just like a walk here or... Yeah. You know? Yeah. But um, so yeah, I was like, that's really cool. But I want there to be no reason other than I'm an adult and I've got money and I want to have fun. Yeah. You know? And I like being a vendor in the position I was before all this happened going like okay I know who the target audience really is here mm-hmm. what I did to market it was talk about it in my podcast create that into a clip put that on my Instagram share it as a story and then put up a poll who's gonna who, who would like this everyone who responded to that I send them the direct invites this is actually what you know like explaining more but telling them less so you're like right. you know here's what you can expect it's gonna be a surprise I need you to wear closed in shoes I need you to wear long pants you're gonna get your own t-shirt Oh, so they're like, oh, okay, I can start to understand. He's, I need shoes. He's thought about it. There's a plan. I'm gonna, he's going to give me a T-shirt. I get a little bit of money back on my $500 investment. Yeah. But the first one, you need to, you need to kind of undersell and over-deliver so that you create... Because this is the best part. Do you know what those 10 guys do when they're on that day? They just post stories and tag you and everything. So <laughs> yeah. the, the exposure for that day, 10 Xs organically. Oh, yeah. The content that I'm getting, because I've got a photographer on hand who's videoing and taking photos of everything. The content that I get organically is nuts. People yeah. are posting for me. It's nuts. And this is the thing. They're marketing the next one. Yeah. Because so. now I've got the list of boys who came and the list of boys who are next in line. So I said to these guys, you got 48 hours to tell me if you're coming or not. I've only got eight <laughs> seats this time because we're taking my bus. Yeah. Uh, four of the, I think five of those seats are gone. And they got like another 24 hours about now to say if they're going to oh, come but if there's, if there's three seats open up like I, I know boys that are like telling like saying like just let me take it before you open it up again just let me take it it's like I can't because I told them that I've got first right of refusal <laughs> yeah so we've got that coming up uh, weirdly right before my birthday so I'm like That's let's gonna be nuts. fucking go boys let's yeah, go yeah, yeah. and the whole concept behind I think what we learned last time was like when it came to the night time nobody wanted to party yeah, yeah. Nobody so. wanted to leave each other, but nobody wanted to party. Yeah. So I'm capitalizing on that and being like, cool, let's have a fucking bro down. Like, let's make it an actual, like, in my mind, because uh, this is one thing the boys are, are like, they're saying, like, are we partying? Are we going to be in Perth? Where are we staying in a hotel? It's like, yeah, you can't. I, I don't want to know a little bit, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just said, look, we're going to be behind closed doors and away from everything. Oh. You know, so it's like, let your hair out sort of feeling you know it's like we're not going to impress all the people that are out in that club or pub it's like we're just trying to like mm. enjoy the fact we've had a hell good day together here's food here's drinks chill out relax yeah. enjoy yeah yeah you know so I'm fucking sounds, sounds epic <laughs> dude I'm absolutely hanging out I bet I reckon yeah. it, and I, I knew in the position you're in you can appreciate the like oh but just yeah seeing the excitement that you're looking forward to seeing their faces and how much they enjoy and the feedback yeah, it's it is it's like a tour, you know. You get to the end of the day, and people are just like coming up to you, hugging you, shaking your hand. Yeah, like, yeah. Thank you so much. That was awesome. And it's just like it gives you those little warm fuzzies inside. Yeah, yeah, it's for sure. Simple, but 
I saw you drop off a, a crew at the um, beach car park. I think it was like the day after. I was, oh, okay. It's like the Friday. I'm not sure if it was you, actually. I think it no, might I think have been. it was another drive. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was on another one. Yeah. Man, those, that was just a young crew. Yeah. And those guys, I'm just like, oh, I'm so jealous. I felt like that yesterday. <laughs> you know, everyone's like, just like, the people that we went on the tour, like, we were, everyone was friendly by the end of the day. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah that like, was, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Because a lot of my tours are just, everyone knows everyone. It's like a group. I don't, I know a lot of some of the tour groups companies down south they do mix groups and I'm, I've always been a bit wary because yeah you could just get a real complete opposite crew and they yeah. might not actually get along but interesting know. yeah so, I, I imagine something like a um, a religious <laughs> if you had like a religious crop in there and then something like me and Dakota and Dylan probably wouldn't vibe all that well yeah you know? yeah, yeah just on so, a different kind of wavelength yeah, so but yeah I, but that Thursday, just everyone, yeah, by the end of the day, you guys are all chatting, you know, yeah, it's talking, good. yeah, it worked really well, so, so, and, yeah, I was kind of, initially I was a bit disappointed because there wasn't as many numbers as I hoped for, but yeah. I think it just worked out really sweet, that it was just a small crew of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, did you, how'd you do, what, how'd you do as far as everyone providing a bit of content for you? Yeah, good, I was, oh, I'm no expert on all that stuff, so I'm still learning, um, but it was amazing just watching it all come in and how much work you guys did. Like, you know, I wasn't with you 24-7 on the tour, but, yeah, it's amazing how much effort you guys do put in. You know, you're still enjoying yourselves, but... Yeah, yeah that's half the was, trick is knowing no, how I loved to it. Yeah. get that shit as quick as possible and then go back to enjoying it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because you don't want to be the guy who's like, oh, we'll do that again. <laughs> <laughs> no, go back, go back. Oh, 100%, yeah. So, yeah, I loved it all coming through and seeing it all and... yeah. And then, yeah, the girls gave us a bit of feedback on what to do. So, yeah. so Yeah, no. such a good time. It was. Quite a good time. Okay. Anyway, is there, do you have any final words? I reckon we should wrap this up with hit the nail on the no, head, I reckon. I think it was a good yarn. Yeah, fucking yeah. oath. I was a bit nervous, a bit excited about it all, but... Um. It's, it's an interesting thing. I, I, every time people come in, I'm always like, how do you feel about this situation right now, you yeah. know? But it's kind of just gone like that, and we've just chatted away. So yeah, no, I've really enjoyed it. So yeah, fucking oath. Now, Appreciate if people it. want to find your business, where can they find you? Uh, so we've got the website, uh, Good Vibes Southwest Tours, uh, social media, Good Vibes SW Tours. Yeah, Instagram, Facebook. Um, yeah, you can book online, all that sort of stuff. Bloody oath, it's and you can also not, go to my content just recently and look for the yeah the tag and. And yeah. have a little gander there so as well. It's not hard to find us. So, yeah. Yep. But yeah, thank you very much for coming okay. on the podcast. Thank you. Appreciate and it, mate. Look after yourself. And everyone, buddy, like, subscribe, do the thing because we're fucking out. Yo! Boom!